Biofilms are complex microbial communities since microorganisms synthesize and secrete a protective matrix that allows addition to a biotic or a biotic surface. Biofilms are dynamics, heterogeneous communities that are continually changing. They can consist of a single bacteria or fungal species, or more commonly, they can be polymicrobial. That is, they contain many different species at the most basic level. A biofilm can be described as a collection of bacteria embedded in a dense, viscous barrier of sugars and proteins. The biofilm barrier protects microorganisms from external threats, and there are some um, infections that can be uh, produced by this kind of uh, biofilm bacteria, as osteomyelitis, endocarditis, dental caries, prostatitis, otitis, fasciitis. Biofilms are associated with chronic infections. There are a lot of vaccines protecting people against viruses and bacteria. Biofilms are not avoided by vaccines. The main trouble is that antibiotics can't reach the bacteria inside the matrix developed by bacteria. And it is because the pores are very small, so the antibiotic molecules can't enter. Some microorganisms can reach your body as a contamination. If the colonization of your microbiota is good, that means that it is in eubiosis. You are resistant to be infected, infected because there are, is no place for external microorganisms. But sometimes inner conditions are disturbed, so external pathogen microorganisms can reach your body because the burden is high and powerful to attack you. At this point, topical antibiotics are a good option. But when the antibiotic selected is not good, the infection is installed and you might need systemic antibiotics. And I would like to call you, your attention to this because systemic antibiotics are harmful because they don't have a GPS to detect the pathogen. Antibiotics travel through the blood all over the body and where they find susceptible bacteria, they kill it, even good bacteria of the microbiota. One thing that you have to know is that we are not really humans by microorganisms. By each human cell, we have 10 bacteria cells and by each cell, we have 100 viral particles. So we are more than 96% of our body are microorganisms. We have to stop to see people as humans and to start to see it as a wall of microorganisms. As a lot of people think that biofilms are bad things, Biofilms are important in our life for the stability of the commensal microbiota, but they are a serious problem for chronic infections. There are some previous conditions that predispose people of chronic infections as diabetes, some biomaterials in the body, cystic fibrosis, smoke, tissue damage, or immunosuppression. These are the most used antibiotic families in chronic infections. That means biofilm bacterial infections. The abuse of antibiotics have developed bacterial resistance that have several levels of resistance. As you can see, we have multidrug resistant bacteria, extensive resistant bacteria, and pandrug resistant bacteria. Until now, numerous investigations have been carried out on the effect of propolis on cells in the planktonic state 
and scarcely on bacteria organized in biofilms. Propolis is a resinous and complex apicultural product with a variable physical appearance, collected and transformed by honeybees, depending on the flowers on which they perch. The bee, by secreting beta-glucosidase during the collection and processing propolis, hydrolyzes the heterocyte from flavonoids to glycons, improving the pharmacological action of the product and those producing physical chemical changes. Propolis is a resinous mixture of double origin, vegetable and animal, of vegetable and volatile oils collected by bees from shoots and exudates from plants, should by bees salivary enzymes and mix it with beeswax. One of the main roles of propolis is to protect the bee colony from infectious diseases due to its high antiseptic efficacy. Due to the multiple chemical components, propolis is considered the most valuable product of bees with a wide variety of therapeutic actions bactericidal, antiseptic, antiparasitic, antiviral, antitoxic, healing, anti-inflammatory, diuretic, analgesic, anti-tumor, regenerative and immunostimulatory. Due to the importance of this extra protector ability that bacteria possess, this is to really aim to determine the effect of propolis directly on biofilms and the cells that were organized in it. 37 strains of Pseudomonas aeruginosa isolated from patients of the hospital, Dr. Julio Rodriguez from Comana, Sucre State, Venezuela, during um, 2014. A sterile nitrocellulose membranes with a pore of 0.45 micro, uh, micrometers were used. Each one of these was placed on the surface of the BHI agar. The membranes were inoculated with 10 microlets of suspension of Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which was in the exponential phase with an optical density that ranged between 0.08 and 0.1 at a wavelength of 600 nanometers. The plates were incubated for 24 hours at a temperature of 35 Celsius degrees for a center amount of the suspension of bacteria in BHI growth in order to hydrate them and provide the conditions for bacteria to grow on them. They were left in incubation at 35 Celsius degrees for 16 to 18 hours. After the incubation time, everything that grew on the surface of the nitrocellulose membranes was scrapped with a sterile scalpel. This is scrap scrapping was read on the spectrophotometer using a sterile BHI growth as a blank. The results of all the reading were compared with each other to make a classification according to biofilm production. Mild was between 0.1 to 0.1100, moderate 0.2 to 0.299, or intense more than 0.3. According to the biofilm production, a level moderate or intense strains were selected at random according to the table of random numbers. Inhibition of biofilm formation was a story by modifying the biofilm formation technique of nitrocellulose membranes. The membranes were inoculated with 10 microlites of suspension of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Subsequently, 100 microlets of propolis were added of different concentration, 10, 50, 100, 250, 500, 
and 1,000 microgram per milliliter of propolis. The plates were incubated at, for 24 hours at um, 35 Celsius degrees temperature. The results of the development of microorganisms inside the biofilm with the different treatments were compared with the positive control of development to which the same amount of microorganisms was added and was subsequently treated with saline to determine in what proportion propolis inhibits biofilm production. Strains were inoculated in BHI broth on ELISA plates and incubated at 35 Celsius degrees for 16 to 18 hours. A three millimeters diameter grid prepared from 100 mesh was introduced in all whole of ELISA plates. It was shaken technically to remove excess samples. The samples were analyzed in a transmission electron microscope. And um, an acceleration voltage of 100 kB in bright field signal mode. 100 of the study strains have biofilm production capacity. Biofilm production light. 1 to uh, 1.100 moderate uh, 100 uh, uh, 0.299 and intense more than 0.300 60% of the same strains had a, a slight biofilm production 24% moderate and 16% intense the results obtained by um, 10 confirming those observed by nitrocellulose membrane. It can be seen that with the use of a concentration of 10 micrograms per mil of propolis, it was possible to decrease the bacteria population from 10 to 13 to 10 to 11 CFU per milliliter. This is, is, this is important as it would help locally to combat infections of the diabetes food and to reduce the use of systemic antibiotics, which may not reach the site infection due to the formation of the biofilm, which must higher concentration 50 to 100 microliters per milliliter. It's possible to inhibit production almost completely, one CFU per milliliter but from the point of view of damage of the necrotic tissue, it is preferable to use less concentrated so as not to further injure the tissue due to the high concentration of alcohol in it. GILAD collaborators in 2016 in Caracas made the inhibition of bacteria with extract from the bees apis mellifera and trigonas demonstrated that it was more effective than the propolis used in this work in E. coli and Staphylococcus aureus strains, since it was enough a 25% solution to inhibit the growth of the biofilm without having the, to dilute the cultures, contrary to this work, which was diluted to 10 to minus 15 to be able to observe its decrease. This difference may be due to the amount of biofilm produced by Pseudomonas aeruginosa strains or the quality of the components of the two types of propolis used. 100% of the studied strains have biofilm production capacity. Biofilm production light, moderate and intense we can uh, reduce the concentration of bacteria inside. Biofilm production described as a defense mechanism by bacterial cells has increased the problem of antimicrobial resistance. Because of this, other alternatives are currently being studied for the treatment of infections by biofilm production bacteria. Among these alternatives are natural substances such as propolis, 
which is a mixture of resins, waxes, essential oils, pollen, and microelements produced by bees. Propolis salts covers and protect the interior of the hive from foreign agents. This organization may be due to regularization by chemical signals called quorum sensing, which is also in charge of regulating the structural stability of the same through the expression of certain genes, either by activation or repression thereof, helping the adaptation and virulence of Pseudomonas aeruginosa to its environment. The quorum sensing is the interbacterial communication by system which allows mobility, virulence, resistance to stress, and the establishment of infections that are difficult to eradicate. These results differ from other studies carried out in the country where propolis had great effectiveness against bacteria in the planktonic state by the uh, but not against bacteria organized within biofilms. In this story, conducted on, um, conducted on Mueller Hinton agar plates to inhibit the growth of various bacteria, including Klebsiella pneumoniae, Echerichia coli, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and Staphylococcus aureus dilution of propolis in alcohol were made to 97 persons. Inhibition was evidenced by measuring a clear halo around the deposit. And as in this study, they observed that with the lowest concentration, it's mean this one, one in 5,210, they obtained a significant reduction in the biofilm although the highest concentration, one to ten, in 10, was the one that almost completely inhibit all bacteria. This organization may be due to the regularization of chemical signals called quorum sensing, which is also in charge of regulating the structural stability of the same through the expression of certain genes, either by activation or repression thereof, help, helping the adaptation and virulence of Pseudomonas aeruginosa to its environment. Biofilm production described as a defense mechanism by bacterial cells has increased the problem of antimicrobial resistance. Because of this, other alternatives are currently being used, studied for the treatment of infections by biofilm production bacteria. Among these alternatives are natural systems such as propolis, which is a mixture of resin, waxes, essential oils, pollen, and microelements produced by bees. Propolis seals, covers, and protect the interior of the hive from foreign agents. These results differ from other studies carried out in the country where propolis was highly effective against bacteria in the planktonic state, but not against bacteria organized within biofilms. Propolis is not constant in their composition, but it was being shown that it has a bacterial action and is capable to pass through biofilm pores and either reach and kill the bacteria inside the matrix. So, in food infections, it could be a good treatment option. Thank you. <laughs>